while you're looking to purchase either an R6 or a V2? Well, that's been an age-old question for a lot of people. Which one should you buy? Because people who buy the V2 are looking for more power, but people who are looking for the R6, they're looking for a little bit of nostalgia and power at the same time. And of course, they're both different budgets. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this episode. So my petrol power dudes, thanks for joining me for another episode. I really appreciate it. I've been having so much fun lately with this motorcycle. I took it to my first track day over at Willow Springs or Big Willow. Track review coming up pretty soon. But let's get to the topic of discussing the R6 versus the Ducati V2. Two motorcycles that are kind of similar, but not really. First of all, let's talk about you as the rider. You as the rider are interested in getting a sport bike. Maybe it's your first sport bike you've ever gotten. Maybe you're an adventure guy going into the sport bike category, which doesn't really work out that way. It's usually the sport bike guys that usually go into the adventure bike category. But in case you're one of the few that actually do do that, well then, you might be wondering, what's a better choice these days? They're both very different bikes. So the first bike we're gonna start out talking about is the R6, which happens to be my favorite, and I'll tell you why. The R6 has been around for the last 20 years, and just recently they discontinued it. I'm sure by now you're aware, but if you're not, go watch my video. But with that being said, it is a motorcycle that has sold over 400,000 all around the world. I don't exactly know the facts and figures for United States, but I think majority of them were sold in the United States. This is the last generation, and in my opinion, it is the greatest generation. Now, a lot of people are talking about the Yamaha R6 as being dumbed down with every single generation because of regulations. And I agree with that to a certain extent, but that's not something that can't be fixed with a tune. As an example, I have a tune on my R6, and I have uh, somewhere around 114 horsepower to the wheel. Now, I'm really curious to find out what an R6 from back in the day is compares to my R6 as, as of today. My R6 as of today has no flat spots and performs like an absolute dream, which I will talk about extensively in my road and track review coming up. And I think I'm gonna release it this weekend. It's just a lot of edits to do, my boys. I would release it a lot sooner, but I've been contemplating on the best way to edit the video. I think I found a way, so uh, good things take a little bit of time. So uh, it'll be worth the wait, don't worry about it. But regardless, it's got 114 horsepower to the, to, to the wheels at the moment. And the bike feels pretty powerful. So uh, it's irrelevant what they talk about as far as the R6 becoming watered down. But with a $200 investment on your bike, you can get it exactly the way you want it. And it'll perform better than any stock R6 that exists out there. Other than that, the stock R6 does not come with a quick shifter, but it has the ability for quick up, just not quick down. But that's also a quick fix because uh, if you want to spend about $200, you can get yourself a quick up. But if you want to get quick up and down like I do, then that's going to cost you about $400 with the TransLogic quick up and down shifter. Now I also understand that there's a lot of different manufacturers out there selling quick shifters. So, But I chose to get it because it's the premium one out there and it's the most tested and uh, a lot of race teams use it and trust it. So. Considering that I track a lot, and this bike is not only a street bike, but it's also a track bike for me, I went with the best out there and I spent uh, some good money on it. And as you can hear, it sounds amazing. So I changed the bike from standard shift to GP shift, because I like that a lot better just more comfortable and uh, considering my cup bike already has it I put it on this bike as well so it's got quick up and down shifter it's got a tuned ECU that produces 114 to the wheels let's see what else the body style is MotoGP derived it is very slippery and not only that it is a modders paradise because everything and anything on this bike can be modified because first and foremost, this motorcycle was developed as a race bike. When they developed this as a race bike, 
a plethora of different companies started developing products for it. You gotta remember that the history behind this motorcycle dates back for the last 20 years. It's won more AMA races than any other motorcycle that there is in the 600 class category. I pretty much modified the bike entirely the way I like it. There's a couple of things that are left on this bike that uh, I'm st I still haven't modified yet, like uh, the brake lever and the clutch lever. I want to change out the master cylinders and put some uh, quality components in it. But other than that, like I've been seriously happy with this motorcycle. At the current moment, the bike weighs 395 pounds wet. I don't know any Ducati 959 or V2 that ever that will ever weigh that much because those motorcycles are very very hard to be put on a diet because they're already on a diet. I removed the exhaust and that removed a ton of weight. I put a lithium ion battery pack that removed at least three pounds. The X up sensor, the CO2 sensor, the tail tidy, all that stuff. I mean, there's probably a couple of more things that I'm missing because I've already done all those things. So make sure to check out the playlist for an entire list of all the things that I've done. And if you're interested in modding your bike the same way I have, in every single video, there's a link to everything that I purchased so you can do the same things that I have. But at the current moment, I'm very, very satisfied with the weight that it's currently at. Pretty significant for a motorcycle that has 114 to the wheel. And that's a huge power to weight ratio. Now, let's talk a little bit about the downsides of this motorcycle. Because there are a couple things, and I will mention them and I will be absolutely candid. This motorcycle is not perfect. Today's standards have changed a lot and things have gotten better. But the things that are negative about this motorcycle is that you're not gonna have like up-to-date electronics. Most of the cool motorcycles these days, even the cheaper ones like uh, the brand new uh, Aprilia RS660 that, compa that compares not to this bike, but to, to motorcycles like uh, the Honda 650, uh, that motorcycle has an IMU system. It has a uh, wheelie control, the cornering traction control, and the ABS, and all that stuff that you would find in bigger motorcycles, that one has. The other negative aspect of this motorcycle is that it does not have a handlebar stabilizer, and it absolutely needs one, and that's the last thing it needs, and I think otherwise, it's a pretty perfect bike in my opinion. So now, let's move on to the V2. The V2 is going to cost you more money, but it is also an exotic motorcycle. Like myself, not a lot of people buy the R6 to take to the track. But the Ducati V2 is also a track bike, but first and foremost, it is designed for the street. And secondary, it is designed to be used on the track. The Ducati V2 is the epitome of technology. It has uh, MotoGP-derived characteristics, such as an IMU system that was developed for the Ducati V4S first, and then it was put onto the Ducati V2. Uh, if you haven't watched my Ducati V2 review, make sure to go check it out. I'll link it to this video as well. But it is it is brimming with technology. It has got a gorgeous four or five inch LCD display. It is just dripping with technology, and it is an absolute beast. The motorcycle is gonna be a lot more powerful than this. But tell me how much of that can you actually use on the street and get away using it. The V2 has some advanced electronics such as cornering ABS, cornering traction control, wheelie control, everything that you hear about these days, that motorcycle has. And so as far as electronics are concerned, not only are they there to make you faster on the track, but they're also there to make you a safer rider on the street. Now, do I wish my R6 had those electronics? Absolutely. But is it something that I would trade this R6 for if, if the next version of the R6 came out with it? Absolutely not. I don't think it's a necessity. I think it's uh, purely down to something that is an option for people to purchase because it sweetens the pot for them. More options equals more value. And uh, for me, the R6 is already a great value, but when it comes to the V2, you're also getting a lot of motorcycle for the money. The V2 obviously is gonna have more horsepower because that has 155. But I've also seen dyno results where it reaches around 130 to 135 to the wheel. So we're only talking about a 15 horsepower difference to the wheel. Being that I already had the Ducati 959 and have ridden the V2 quite a lot actually. 
whenever it was first introduced. I can tell you that they are not that much different. Electronics wise, yes, they are very different. In terms of aesthetics, yes, they look different. As far as the LCD dash, yes, that looks different as well. But as far as riding the motorcycle itself, I would say ergonomically, the Ducati V2 is a bit better. It is a more comfortable bike, so if you're looking for comfort, that is definitely the choice to get. Make no mistake, the Ducati V2 is definitely a superior motorcycle to this. But should you buy one? Well, we got to talk about a few things here. What's your criteria? Do you prefer something that revs very high or are you, are you quite comfortable and okay with something that revs to about 10-11 thousand RPM? Do you want a high horsepower motorcycle or are you content with something that produces about 114? Because the V2 is only about 15 more horsepower than this at the wheel. 15 or 20, give or take. Are you at all interested in getting the latest and the greatest electronics and gizmos? Because that can change your perspective as well between getting the V2 or getting the 959. And most importantly, do you have the budget to buy a V2? Because the V2 is a premium motorcycle with a premium price tag. It is not a cheap motorcycle. By the time you're finished pricing out the V2 with, with tax, License fees, registration, all that stuff. You're looking close to a $20,000 motorcycle. Meanwhile, you can get an R6 for probably half the price. If you're going to purchase an R6, obviously at this point, it's going to be kind of hard. It may be hard or maybe not, depending on when you watch this video. If you're watching this video a couple of years down the line, you're probably going to have a hard time finding the 2020 model because that's the last year it was made. But if you're watching it now and you're looking for an R6 now, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be able to find a last year R6, depending on where you live in this world. But in the United States, there's a lot of dealerships that still have them. So let's just say, hypothetically speaking, that you really don't have a budget. And uh, you know what? You can buy any bike you like. Fine. That's totally cool. So that's a good baseline to start out with. Which one should you buy? So you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Are you a street rider or are you going to be tracking this motorcycle? Because if you're going to be tracking the motorcycle, I can tell you hands down, what's going to be a lot more fun is going to be the R6. Because of the fact that not only it weighs a lot less, but it's also flickable, so much more flickable and handles so much better than the V2 will ever handle. Wet weight on this motorcycle can be brought down with a couple thousand dollars in mods to 395 pounds like I have. And you still wouldn't go over what you would pay for a V2. But if you're going to be riding this motorcycle primarily on the street, I got to be honest with you. It's not really that comfortable of a motorcycle to ride day in and day out on the street. I really wouldn't suggest that. For that, I think both bikes are just wrong. You can buy a naked motorcycle and you would be totally fine and it would suit you perfectly. But a motorcycle such as the V2 or the R6, they were first and foremost designed for the track. And uh, I really hope that in this video, I said everything that I had to say. I have uh, quite a lot of experience with both motorcycles and I've been pretty candid about sharing with you my experiences and my opinions thus far. So now it's your turn. Do you agree with what I'm talking about? Do you agree with everything that I mentioned? And would you buy the R6 or would you buy the Ducati V2? Now it's your turn. Write down in the comment section down below and let me know what your favorite choice is. And do you agree or disagree with some of the comments that I've made? Do you, do you think I'm biased? by saying the things that I've said about the R6? Or do you think that I was being honest and candid? Uh, I would love to hear your perspective on it. I would like to hear what your opinions are. And if you were in the dilemma of choosing an R6 or a V2 or a 959 or something in the, within that category, what were, your, what were the reasons why you purchased the motorcycle you did? All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for another episode. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it was informative for you. And I hope uh, it helps you choose between purchasing a Yamaha R6 or a V2. Uh, the Yamaha R6 unfortunately is not going to be around with us anymore, but the V2 will. Unfortunately these motorcycles have a short lifespan and sooner or later the 2020s are going to be gone. So if you're in store for an R6, go grab one now before it's gone. Otherwise, use market 
has plenty of them as I make this video. And please don't forget to check out my new website called petrolpower.co if you're interested in purchasing some merch, if you want to support me. Alright guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.